Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown, the casual farming game that I'm making using my own engine. Last time I was finishing up version 0.1 of the game, that was all about getting the core gameplay loop set up, and this week I'm going to be moving on to version 0.2, which is going to be all about fleshing out that gameplay loop a bit, making it more interesting, and uh, it's going to be a lot to do with looking after the plants as they grow. So if we have a look in Trello, I've been planning out all of the updates that are going to be part of this version 0.2 and you can see that first up I need to work on implementing support for entity picking into my engine. So that's uh, being able to detect which entity in the world the player is currently mousing over so that I know when they're trying to click on an entity because that's going to be really necessary for a lot of the updates coming up. So I'm going to get straight into it, start doing some programming and I'll show you how it's going in a bit. So for the entity selecting, I'm going to be using a color picking technique just because it's what I implemented before in Aquilinox. So it'll be really easy for me to get that set up nice and quickly here. And uh, I made a video about this technique back when I worked on Aquilinox. So if you want to see more information about how it works, you can check out that video. But for now, just very quickly, every entity in the world has an ID. I convert those IDs into unique colors. I then render the entities in their corresponding colors to an off-screen image, which is what you're looking at here. Then once I've got that off-screen image, I can just read the color of the pixel at the mouse cursor's coordinates, and I can then convert that color back to an entity ID, and that tells me which entity the mouse cursor is currently over. So I'm just working on implementing all of that at the moment. So the entity selecting is all working. It can now correctly detect which entity in the world the mouse cursor is over, and that's going to be really useful for the next few updates. Um, I probably will have to come back and make a few slight improvements at some point. For example, some of the smaller entities are a little bit tricky to click on at the moment because they're so small, so I might have to give them some custom hitboxes. Um, also, I'm sure someone's going to ask why I didn't use a physics-based, raycasting-based approach for this. Um, also totally valid, to be honest the main reason was just that I already had this method set up in Equilinox, so it was really quick and easy for me to get this up and running here, um, but both methods are, are totally fine. So the next feature that I'm going to implement is watering, watering your plants. Um, I've just been planning that out a bit, and there are going to be a few new concepts that I need to implement for this. So firstly, there's going to be a watering can item, and on the icon for that, somewhere there needs to be a meter that shows you how full or empty it is, um, how much water there is in there. And then when it is empty, you're going to be able to refill it at a well, and that's where the entity selecting is going to come into play, um, because the well is going to be a 3D object in the world, and you have to click on that to refill the watering can. And then when you're doing the watering, I need to have some sort of visual indication to show which tiles have already been watered. Um, I think what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to change the color of the soil in the tiles to show how wet they are. So a few different things to be getting on with here and uh, I think I'll start off by making the watering can item. Here's the watering can item in the game and next I need to add that water meter next to its icon so that you can see how much water's in it. I've been doing the programming for the watering can uh, which has a maximum capacity and it also has a number which indicates how much water it currently has in it and then in the game that amount of water is represented in this water bar here uh, which I can make go up or down. Currently I'm just making it go up or down manually um, but obviously this would happen as you carry out your watering and then fill up the watering can. I've just been working on the actual watering mechanic, so now if you equip the watering can that activates the watering tool which then allows you to water things in the game. So um, all you have to do is click on a tile to water it, which at the moment doesn't actually do anything except for making the water in your watering can go down. Uh, so you can see I've emptied the watering can here and uh, now I can't water anymore. So next I need to add the well into the game so that I can refill the watering can. So 
So the well item and the well entity are now in the game, so I can place one in the world here. Um, I didn't want to spend too long on the model because, as I've mentioned before, all of the models in the game at the moment are placeholders. I'm going to be doing a big graphical update soonish, um, but not just yet. So you have to put up with these graphics for a little while longer. So just about to finish up for the day, but I wanted to quickly show you that I got the well working and it's working well. Um, so if I just go ahead and empty my watering can here, you can see the water level going down uh, until it's empty. And now I can click on the well to refill the watering can. So this is why I had to get the entity picking set up earlier. Um, so if I click on the well, you can see it's refilled my watering can and I can water things again. Um, so if I just do that again, I can click on the well and the water level goes all the way back up. And obviously I need some more user feedback here. When you click on the well, there should be some sort of visual effects or and sound effects and particle effects. Um, but you'll just have to imagine those for now. So, new day, new task. Today the plan is to sort out the rendering of those terrain tiles um, so that I can change their colour to indicate how wet they are, which I think might end up being a little bit more difficult than it sounds, but we'll see. So what I'm working on this morning is I'm changing the way that the terrain tiles are rendered because that, or what I was doing previously, is that the entire terrain was a single mesh, um, which means that changing the colour of individual tiles was a little bit difficult, because it means that I'd have to continuously be updating the mesh data, which isn't ideal. Um, so what I've decided to do is I've removed the soil tiles from the terrain mesh, and I'm instead going to render them individually using something called instance rendering, which is just a very efficient way of rendering the same shape many times. So I'm just setting that up in the code at the moment and uh, almost got it working. So after a bit of trouble, after a bit of messing around, I finally got the instance rendering to work properly and um, the soil tiles are now being rendered individually, which means I can very easily change their color, which as you can see, I'm doing here. Next up, in the soil tile class, I've been introducing the concept of wetness, which is just a number between zero and one, indicating how wet that tile is. And then I'm using that wetness value to determine the color of the tile. Um, so I've got a dry color, I've got a wet tile, and I use the wetness value to blend between the two colors. Um, at the moment, I've just set all of the soil tiles to have a random wetness so that I can test this out. And then in the game, you can see that all of the soil tiles are different shades of brown with the, the lighter ones being drier and the darker ones being wetter. So the obvious next step was to tie up the wetness value with the watering tool. So in the watering tool, whenever you click on a tile, it now waters that tile, which just sets the wetness value to one. So in the game, you can see me doing that. Whenever I click on a tile, it now actually waters the soil and the soil turns wet. So the next step will be to have the tiles drying out slowly over time, um, but I'll get to work on that this afternoon. First, I want to have some lunch. Back to work after lunch, back to work on the terrain tiles, and I've just been getting the drying out to work. So in the soil tile class, I've added an update method, which slowly decreases the wetness value over time. So in the game, if I water these plants, you'll see that the wet tiles slowly dry out over time. Well, they're drying out quite quickly here, obviously, that's just for the video, but otherwise working as expected. Um, one thing that does annoy me though is the very hard edges between tiles of different wetnesses. Um, so I'm going to see if I can try and do some work in the shader to smooth out those transitions. So after a bit of work in the shaders, I've come up with an effect that I'm really happy with. I think it looks so much more natural now. Um, the colours of the tiles kind of merge into each other. The way that it works, I can show you the shader code here. 
Um, it's relatively inexpensive. It basically calculates a weighted average of all of the nearby wetness values based on distance. Um, the downside is it does mean that during rendering it needs to know about the eight neighboring tiles as well. So it is a bit of extra information that has to be sent to the GPU. But the wetness values are only one byte each, so it's only eight extra bytes per instance. So it's not too bad. Um, but if anyone can think of a more efficient way of doing this, then do please let me know. But the results, I'm really happy with. Uh, I think it looks really nice, especially if you compare it to what it was before, how hard those edges were and how kind of pixelated it all looks. It's a definite improvement. So that's going to be it for this video. I have to say, I'm getting quite excited about this game. I know it still looks really rough around the edges and there's still not a whole load going on. But as I've been planning out the next few updates, I think the gameplay is going to really start coming together over the next few weeks. I think it's really going to start getting interesting. And um, then the big graphical update is going to come soon. I think that's going to make a big difference for you guys watching the video. Um, I think you'll really be able to see the game in a whole new light after that. So I'm feeling really positive about this project and hopefully some of you guys are as well. Before I finish, I just want to give a big shout out firstly to Jonas, I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with him, a fellow YouTuber game developer. He just released his game, Will You Snail, last week. Um, I've been playing it a lot myself, it's really good, so if you want to check it out then there's a link in the description. And I also want to give a big thank you to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Adam Farkas, Alexander Chavez, Alan Lance, Andrew Witt, Busvara Valter, Caffeine Coder, Christoph Herpo, Dieter Reinert, George Fedorov, Gregory Horvath, Hagen Vingard, Harry Chung, Yuri Kranovec, John Needham, Josiah Hillman, Leandro Di Pietro, Marek Mikolajczyk, Mario Martins, Miggy Doze, Neil Blakey Milner, Sean McCrory, Simon Gander, Thomas Johnson, Timothy Gibbons, and Vladislav Dohadayev. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.